So it is so close. Does that mean that everything counts, Mohammed, in the next, what, four trading days that we have? No, I think everything counts on their assessment of the risks uh, and how nervous they are about making a policy mistake. This is not about the positive case for going forward. This is how nervous are you about making a policy mistake. And that's a judgment call. And for us to be able to guess it, it's really hard. It, it depends on the dynamics in that room. And it depends on what Janet Yellen, at the end of the day, feels about the probability of a policy mistake. And what's, what's really hard, Betty, is that you can make a policy mistake on either side. And that's right. why this is one of the closest calls I can ever remember for the Fed. So how many of them do you think are actually undecided right now, Mohammed? I suspect most of them are. And the reason why is not the domestic case. I think the domestic case for raising rates is solid. It has been for a while. They should have moved when the both domestic and international elements were aligned. They didn't. And now they have a tug of war. The domestic case remains strong, but the international case is flashing yellow, telling them, be careful, be careful. And, and that's why it's such a hard call. Mohammed, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the yield curve, selling at the short end, buying at the long end. Is that a trend that you think will continue? So I think that reflects the notion that if they don't move now, they will move in December. So it's, it's an issue of timing. And now people are realizing that this would be part of the loosest tightening in Fed history. The Fed wants us to stop obsessing about the first hike. After all, it's 25 basis points at most. Stop obsessing about the first hike and look at the journey. This is going to be a very shallow path. It's going to be very data dependent, which means it's going to be stop go, not like the old days of hike at every meeting. And the terminal point is going to be well below history. So, so what the Fed is encouraging us to do is stop obsessing about the timing of the first hike and look at the journey. And if you put it in that context, it means that you'll get the behavior of the curve that you're seeing. Uh, and yet, you know, Goldman Sachs, I don't know, Mohammed, if you saw that report uh, last night, Goldman released this, uh, this report where they say, speaking about that volatility, uh, that is exactly why we're not going to see the Fed raise rates. And in fact, all the volatility uh, in the last several weeks equals three interest rate hikes. Can you see that? Yeah, they're right. I mean, they're right in saying that because volatility has gone up, financial conditions have tightened, right? So the market has done some of the work that the Fed would otherwise want to do. So, so they are right there. I think it's part of a broader issue, and you've heard me talk about this. We are in the midst of transitioning volatility paradigms. We're going from a world in which markets were comfortable that central banks can repress volatility to a world in which markets are less comfortable about central banks' ability to repress volatility, and therefore they've repriced volatility, and therefore have to reprice asset prices. I think, I think that, that is the transition that we're in, and it's a really important transition.